As a cloudless day yields to a moonlit night in the savannah in northern Kenya, a dozen wildlife rangers armed with automatic weapons begin their nightly patrol. Throw Bravo, radio check over. Tonight, the team is on edge, says Commander John Palmieri. It gives us a big, big worry. Um, where poaching usually be active on a full moon. There's more poaching during the full moon nights. Yeah. And it's deadly business. Dozens of rangers have been killed in Africa battling poachers in the last few years. This is what these guys do every night. Go up to a high ground, what they call an observation point, and then sit here all night long and scour these valleys looking for any sign of movement or a gunshot. Night vision goggles help spot elephants and see potential human threats. For this night, at least, it was all quiet for nature's so-called great masterpiece. The African elephant is the largest mammal to walk the earth, a majestic creature that shares many noble characteristics with humans. Strong family units and maternal bonds, intelligence, longevity, and yes, terrific memories. Also like us, they seem to grieve and appear to mourn their dead, a trait which tragically has been on display far too often of late. Some 25,000 elephants a year are now being lost to poachers in Africa. Ian, how bad is it here? Sanjin, it's, it's the worst that it's been uh, in the last 20 years. It's a steady deterioration and getting worse. Kenyan-born Ian Craig leads conservation efforts for the Northern Rangelands Trust, an innovative partnership of nearly 20 wildlife conservancies. In years past, says Craig, the typical poacher was a solitary local, simply trying to feed his family. Today, though, foreign criminal syndicates with sophisticated equipment kill viciously and in ever greater numbers. In an infamous 2012 episode, an estimated 300 elephants were gunned down in Cameroon, right inside a national park. So who's behind it? I think clearly China is driving this, or is it coming from the Far East? 90% uh, of the ivory being uh, picked up in Nairobi Airport or Kenya's uh, port of entry and exit is with Chinese nationals. Despite laws banning the harvest and sale of ivory, it remains a powerful status symbol in China and the Far East, where it's used commonly to make artworks and religious icons. The economic boom there has tripled the price of ivory in just the last four years, and it's rejuvenated the poaching economy in Africa. So what's the price on his head? The price on his head is, a, is about $2,000, $2,500 to the gunman. So it's several years worth of... W wages on that elephant. On that elephant. And so people are prepared to risk their lives to kill them. You know, you hear about these ivory wars, but it doesn't seem real until you come across this. And this writhing, stinking mass of elephant that has been shot by automatic weapons, no chance at all. Not just one, but six. One here, one there, one a little bit further over there. And then it comes flooding right at you, and you can't escape the fact that People are willing to kill something this big just for a tooth. There are some encouraging signs. This past January, China crushed six tons of illegal ivory, and Hong Kong has pledged to destroy 28 tons over the next two years. And Kenya has enacted tougher anti-poaching laws. But the poaching continues, and protecting elephants has become an arms race. Kenya spends tens of millions of dollars a year on its 3,000-member wildlife ranger force. Tracking dogs hunt poachers in the field and detect ivory being smuggled. <laughs> Digital radio systems now connect rangers with observation posts throughout the country. And GPS callers can track family groups of elephants in real time. They've even built wildlife underpasses beneath highways, allowing elephants to travel safely through historic migration corridors. Just as important is getting locals invested in wildlife. 
In many areas, tribesmen don't just lead tours, they run the preserves. <laughs> Tourism profits help communities understand that living elephants can be more valuable than dead ones. They're seeing these new lodges developing, they're seeing better security for themselves, they're seeing money being generated from tourism, going into education. And so where these benefits are clean and clear to communities, it's working. But changing attitudes takes time, and time is not on the elephant side. From a high of 1.3 million African elephants in the late 1970s, poaching reduced populations to critical levels in the 1980s. The numbers are plummeting again, and there are only about 500,000 elephants left. If poaching continues unchecked, African elephants could be functionally extinct in our lifetime. This is Mountain Bull, a six-ton local legend who's been targeted by poachers for his massive tusks. Today, though, it's a Kenyan veterinarian armed with a tranquilizer dart who's on the hunt, stalking the bull, waiting for an open shot. It's an extraordinary attempt to save the life of just one animal. This magnificent bull elephant has already had lots of interactions with poachers. In one incident alone, he's been shot eight times. The slugs are still within his body, but he has survived. Now, conservationists and rangers are doing something dramatic. They're taking off part of his tusk in the hopes that it will make him less of a target. The operation was over quickly and eventually the noble giant wobbled to his feet and headed back to the bush to hopefully live out his days in peace. Sadly, it was not to be. Recently, the carcass of mountain bull was found near the foot of Mount Kenya, attacked with poison spears. The remnants of his tusks unceremoniously hacked off by poachers. Ian Craig worries that unless this lust for ivory is controlled, the elephant may not survive. The supply here is finite. This isn't gold. This isn't diamonds. This is even more precious because it's being grown by an animal. And we're killing that animal to supply that demand. <laughs> 